If you're confused as to what you're looking at on the screen, well, you shouldn't be because you should have read the title. I'm just kidding. We are going to look at flush screen embezzles and non-flush screen embezzles. It's a topic of discussion that comes up daily in our daily lives, in our work lives, um, when we review devices, when we compare devices. It's always of a concern, but we've never actually touched on it. So let's take a look. We have here various devices. We have a Forma, an Oasis 3, a Kobo Libra, and a Pocketbook InkPad 3 Pro. We're just gonna start with the flush screen and bezel guys because we're gonna hold it up to the camera. We're gonna reflect some light into it and really show you what it looks like on these devices. So if you're not um, caught up to speed, there's two parts to a screen or I guess the front assembly. There's the screen itself, which is the outlined actual screen, the rectangular thing that you look at. Then there's the bezel, and that would be the frame around the screen. Uh, the further frame around it, the one that wraps around the side that you would see on, say, the pocketbook, um, you could just chalk that up to being part of the housing or the shell or the frame. So anyways, screen, bezel. So a flush screen and bezel will look like this. There's no gap between the actual screen and the side of the device. And the advantage of this is that it's a straight flat piece you don't have any problems with the touch panel because it's not a sunken screen and you can do things like better light distribution uh, better stability it's safer and the screen won't get damaged if you attack it with certain things so that is one of the advantages of a flush screen and bezel but what we have found because you have that actual layer above the screen it is raised so your experience when you look at the screen is actually you're further away from the lines and the text than if you had a uh, non-flush screen and bezel. You'll see though it is very nice, very readable, but it does reflect more light we find than a sunken screen. We'll just look at another one here. This is the Kobo Forma. Same thing. Screen bezel completely flush all the way through. They have some design elements on the side, but that's a separate piece altogether. So it looks very nice like that. Again, very safe, very sturdy. You have something actually protecting the screen itself. You see this fair amount of reflectivity, but overall it's very nice. Looking at some things that aren't flush screen and bezel. By the naked eye, it feels more readable and you'll see that there is a definitive gap because you can actually touch the side like that. And with this, especially when it comes to note taking devices, which we have covered in another video, your touch is actually a little bit restricted because to get your touch to activate on the absolute extreme corner, it's very, it's very difficult because there's the bezel in the way. So if you had things like screen elements, bookmarking, little X's at the top that you're trying to touch with the corner, not all devices are fully optimized for that. So you might actually be losing out on a little bit of overall functionality. In this case, why a lot of people have moved away from these devices to flush screen and bezels is because of the exposed screen effectively. There's only a very thin layer uh, dedicated for touch uh, some devices use infrared, some devices use uh, capacitive. There's only a thin layer dedicated for touch, so you're actually very close to the screen. Although the advantage of this is that your text is very close to your face. It's not further away, there's nothing in the way. But another thing that is a downside is that light moves better through glass than basically through air. So if you had a glow light on which we'll show you in a second it's actually going to look a little bit better on the flush screen and bezel models rather than the uh, sunken screen and here's the pocketbook device so we've noticed when it comes to note taking on this device when we try to use a capacitive stylus it's not very easy to get into the corner when you're drawing because you do lose that functionality in the corner and some screens are very sunken and this one's a millimeter and a half I don't know what the imperial uh, measurement is on that one but less reflectivity overall kind of better quality because there's nothing in the way of your text so it comes off extremely high quality but more of an exposed 
uh, feeling to it. So when it does come time to get your device, a lot of people do put screen protectors, but then you're just putting more layers in front of you and the text, so that's a little bit of a downside. It's very hard to tell on camera, but the flush screen and bezel Oasis 3 actually has better light distribution because you have that piece of glass. When you shoot light at a piece of glass like that, it, sh it spreads out and makes this even distribution. Whereas on the non flush screen and bezel, you're actually shooting kind of onto the glass, onto the screen itself. So you get that distribution, but it gets in your face a little bit more. This does shoot further out into the room than the Kindle would. Another thing is that you can actually pinpoint all the little LEDs right here where I'm pointing this pen, you see the little Christmas lights, one, two, one, two, one, two, blue, orange, blue, orange, blue, orange. Those are the LEDs. That is what's illuminating your screen. If you change any of the LEDs like this, we'll turn off the natural light. Now they're just all blue. You can count them one, two, three, four, five, like that. However, on a flush screen and bezel, without a completely dark room and a magnifying glass, even that, it's almost impossible to identify the actual LED lights at the bottom. You just simply can't see them on any of the sides. And the light distribution is more even, it, it actually projects less, and it's more of just all contained in the screen. So if you're wondering why the Oasis 3 is so much more than, say, the Libra, the Pocketbook, etc., that is why, because flush screen and bezel devices tend to be a lot more money. Anyways, you can't really go wrong with either one. If you choose to go the route of a flush screen and bezel, if you choose to go the route of a conventional uh, sunken screen, neither one is more negative than the other, and they both come with both pros and cons, high price, better quality, low price, lesser quality, but it's you get what you pay for essentially in the end. So I hope this kind of woke you guys up. Uh, if you haven't ever considered what the differences are for the people that are technically uh, technically inclined and know all about this, well, this video really wouldn't be for you guys because it would just be a rehash. So this would be for the people who need a little bit of a informative boost for goodyreader.com and a comparison between flush screen and bezels and sunken screens. This is Peter.